Hey Pokemon Master, Berkey Butobi here, and in this video I'm going to tell you my ideas for the missing gym leaders or type specialists of the Kanto region. Because despite there being 8 gym leaders and 4 Elite 4 members, well, we know that there's more than 8 gym leaders in the Kanto region. Thank you, Gary. Plus, we know the Pokemon gyms change hands, like Janine taking over the Future City gym from her father Koga, granted the type stayed the same, or Blue taking over Giovanni's gym, changing the type completely. In the animated series, we'd see Agatha be being an acting gym leader in the Viridian City gym as well. In Pokemon Black and White 2, your previous rival Cheron becomes the first gym leader in the Asperita City gym, so yeah. There are loads of ways in which gym leaders can change, and surely, throughout the history of the Kanto region, there must have been a type specialist for every single Pokemon type. Including Dark, Steel, and Fairy, which weren't even in the original Kanto games. I love this idea, and I think I'm going to make a whole series out of it. I love it. A new idea for a new year. Fresh. A brand new series. No one's done it before, and it seems someone has done this idea already. Still, I'm sure no one would mind if I just took the idea for my- Hi, can I help oh, you? Oh, hi, little Cubone. Sorry, I didn't see you there. That's Emperor Cubone to you, and that seems to be my idea you're stealing there. Emperor Cubone, your greatness. I, I wasn't stealing the idea, I was merely inspired by it creatively. Yes, uh, my liege. Please, just stop groveling. Y you mean groveling? Look, I'll allow you to have the idea, but what do you say we make it a collab? And when we're done here, we can go over to my channel and discuss the different type combinations that starters could have in fours. And that sounds like a plan to me, so let's get started. So yes, I have been highly inspired by Emperor Cubone's idea, and I think the idea to make this series for every single Pokemon region is a fantastic idea. However, over on my channel, I already have my own ideas, and there is a chance that great minds might think alike. So the basic rules that I used are to try and find the gym leader or Elite Four member of a missing type specialist. Only using a single type is not enough, they had to be officially sanctioned by the Pokemon League. Otherwise, any random fisherman would count. This could be someone that we've met before, like, say, the Pokemon Fan Club president, or it could be someone that we've never met. Their teams are generally composed of Pokemon that don't encroach upon the territory of other substantial claims by different gym leaders. So, for instance, Gyarados is a flying type, but both Misty and Lance have used one many times over the years. And you definitely can't steal someone's ace. I mostly picked new locations for the gyms, but that's just because I was imagining a time that wasn't too far off from the Kanto that we had already seen. And of course, giving out TMs and badges is just icing on the cake. Additionally, I thought it would be a really fun idea to go through the missing Pokemon types of each region, work out what I would do for a gym for myself, then watch Emperor Cubone's videos and see if there was any similarities. And if there were, then I would try and edit mine so that they'd be different. That way, my series and Emperor Cubone's series are totally different and you can watch them both and enjoy two different takes. As well as that, I encourage you to get creative in the comments and let me know what you would do. But you know what? We've been keeping you waiting for long enough. So, the Kanto region. Flying, Bug, Normal, Dark, Steel, and Fairy. What would I do for those type specialists in Kanto? Well, for this first one, let's just take a look at how Emperor Cubone approached the situation. While I won't go into detail for every one, the Bug type I chose a town from the anime. I think it was actually part of the Orange Islands, maybe? But the team was comprised of Pinsir, Parasect, and Scyther, and maybe a Kingler if you wanted to throw in a little type diversity. But the gym puzzle was just your basic game of shoots and ladders. Or snakes and ladders over here? Anyway, let's see what Toby's come up with. So, for my bug type Pokemon gym, I want to imagine an older Kanto region. Maybe Professor Oak is still a Pokemon trainer and traveling the world himself. Heck, maybe that's the game you're playing. And I've always found it interesting how Viridian Forest and Viridian City don't have a lot of cohesion. There's nothing particularly buggy about Viridian City. It's just a city that happens to have a forest next to it, and that forest therefore has become named as Viridian Forest. It could just as easily have been Pewter Forest, because it's next to Pewter City. So, I kind of like the idea that in the past, Viridian City was just Viridian Town. It was a much smaller place, and Viridian Forest was overgrowing much of it. 
making Viridian Town and the forest kind of as one, with trees in between houses that are still being cleared out, getting ready for a city to be built. This is fundamentally what Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow were inspired by, Satoshi Tajiri being a bug collector in his youth, and seeing that conflict of nature and then technology and people. And I would imagine my gym leader to be somewhat inspired by Satoshi Tajiri. This is him in his hometown collecting bugs. He is the gym leader, he's the first gym leader of the Kanto region, and his gym is set in the forest itself. He's built it himself out of trees. Sadly, one day it will be taken over by the city, it will all be wiped away, and Giovanni will set up shop, but until then, Satoshi Tajiri is the inspiration for my gym leader. He is the ultimate bug catcher, and there is a bug that I think works really well as a first gym bug. I don't want to do that this gym leader has a Caterpie and Weedle and then like a Scyther, because it's too similar to Bugsy. So I think the ace Pokemon here should be Venonat. I think, yeah, the idea of them having Weedle and Caterpie or Kakuna and Metapod, that kind of works so you get a little bit of the like, oh, these are the different bugs you can find in the forest. But as an ace Pokemon, my bug type gym leader will have a Venonat because it's still unevolved, but it's bulky, like in comparison to the other bug type Pokemon. On top of that, it has access to a bunch of psychic moves as well as all of your various spores. So I just think Venonat would make for a really interesting early game like boss Pokemon. Additionally, you can catch it just the other side of Mount Moon, so by the time you go through Pewter City and you've got the other side of Mount Moon, you're now encountering the boss Pokemon from the beginning of the game, but now it's just a wild spawn, and I think that would feel really good as like you're progressing through the game. But yeah, I think the gym leader is inspired by Satoshi Tajiri, the gym is in Viridian Forest, which is now like much, much bigger because it's set in the past. They've got a Caterpie, a, a Metapod, a Weedle, and then, of course, a Venonat the bigger of the small bugs, and when you defeat them, of course, you get Pin Missile and the access to the HM Cut, which you should use responsibly to get through the forest. If too many people cut down the trees, then it's gonna be bad news, but you're a Pokemon master, so you must care about Pokemon. Well, I must say, that's a pretty good approach. We've already seen Viridian Gym change hands before, so it's not out of the question. And I like the bigger emphasis on Viridian Forest, since it seems pretty important at the time you're going through, but there's really no reason to go back. And while the same might be said about this one, you definitely won't forget your time there now. I also really appreciate the fact that Venonat is used in this gym because you just never see it that early in the game. And getting a tease of what's to come is one of the most exciting parts about Pokémon. Also, giving honor to the creator himself is a great easter egg. You're pretty good at this. What else you got? Okay, so if for the bug gym I went back in time, let's go forward in time for the flying gym. Erika's gym is now a botanical garden, protected, you're not allowed to battle there in case of fire Pokemon, so it's fire to the whole thing like in the animated series. No, instead Pokemon battles have been moved out of Celadon City. But you know where people love battling around Celadon? The Cycling Road. And Celadon City has gotten a little bit bigger, as cities sometimes do. And as always, it's a rough part of the city as the biker gang known as the Dodrios or the Pidgeots are here to roost. Dodrio and Dodrio are wildly underloved bird Pokemon from Generation 1, and of course, used by Bird Keeper Toby himself. This biker gang takes over the cycling road, and the gym is right at the top of cycling road. You're gonna have to cycle around cycling road in a really awkward pattern, meaning you see the whole thing, battling a bunch of the biker gang before you can get to the main bit of the Pokemon gym. A stadium run by a new gym leader, an expert of the move, Fly. Yes, this is the person who gives you the HM for Fly in red, blue, yellow, fire red, leaf green. She is our new flying type gym leader, her gym trainers are this biker gang. Fly will be your HM and of course the Pokemon she'll use. She'll use Pidgeotto, probably. I can imagine a ferocious Fero, a Farfetch'd and of course a Dodrio as her ace. Dodrio needs some Gen 1 love, and I think this is a really interesting and fun way of putting together a flying gym. And for defeating the gym, again, she'll give you the HM for fly, exclaiming that she used to give it out for free, but since she became the gym leader, she you gotta prove yourself now. This one was knocked out of the park. I always knew that mysterious woman had more going on around her. Also, the biker gang is a nice touch, because they're already hanging around there anyway, just waiting for solid leadership. And my mind can't help but go to Jesse and James when they rolled with a bike gang in the anime. Plus, her flying type emphasis is perfect with the Let's Go games adding a bunch of windmills all along the bike path as well, as if to usher her in. What else you got? 
For the normal gym, this is the hardest one for me to do and make the most different from Cubone's gym and what he did. This is because when it comes to the normal type Pokemon, Kanto doesn't really focus on weak normal types outside of like Rattata and Raticate. Instead, it's known for its powerful normal type Pokemon. Kangaskhan, Tauros, Ditto, Porygon kind of an interesting one, Snorlax. There's Chansey as well. I think the type specialist maybe would be better not being a gym leader, but perhaps one of Professor Oak's aides, or perhaps Professor Oak in the future. I think given that all the towns are named after different colors, Pallet Town might weirdly work for the normal type because the normal is like a blank canvas. It's, it's void of color, but Pallet Town, I mean, you've got lots of colors. To, but I don't know, maybe it would work in a weird kind of incongruent way. Out of all of them, I'm honestly the most surprised that Normal wasn't even tried in Kanto because there are so many great options. But, uh, this one does seem a little similar to mine, so is there anything that you can do to make it more interesting? Well, another route I could take is going back to Viridian City, this time after Blue Leaves for the Alola region, and creating a gym leader who is an early game gym leader, taking just one of these powerful normal type Pokemon and using them kind of as a boss Pokemon. This is very heavily inspired and similar to Whitney and her Mill Tank, but imagine instead of a Mill Tank, she's got a Chansey, which has an even higher HP wall. As a second or third gym or even first gym, just a single Chansey would be devastating to any starting Pokemon trainer, really forcing them to think outside the box and use status moves. I know it's a little bit of a copycat this time from Whitney, but everyone's terrified of Whitney, so I think it's a good place to steal from. And you know, maybe this is the kind of thing that could give you access to the HM for Rock Climb, or maybe if it's late game, you get the TM for Hyper Beam, so any of that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Chansey could definitely steal the show, and it's so rare that some people might not even see it otherwise. Good job. Okay, I'm gonna quick fire these three, and to me, the steel type gym is absolutely obvious. It's in Vermilion City. First of all, we've taken the inspiration that Jasmine had in Johto taking what used to be an electric type gym and turning it to a steel type gym because quite simply, they've got access to Magnemite, which is the only Kanto Pokemon with a steel type in it. But it's not just that the gym leader has taken over the Vermilion City gym. No, no, no. The Vermilion City gym leader nowadays is the guy who spent all that time with his Machop or Machoke building a whole building. They've built the gym. He's used the muscle of his Machop to oust Lieutenant Surge, he's gone. Many of the gym trainers with Magnemites have moved over to be steel type gym trainers with their Magnemites on team. And if you get to the gym leader, he'll be like, yes, I built this whole gym and I beat Lieutenant Surge in a battle with a Pokemon that I caught in Diglett Tunnel. And you'll be like, what? But Diglett, Duxley, they're ground type Pokemon, no. You battle him, he's got some Magnemites, of course. And then at the end, he's got an Alolan Dugdrio because that is part steel type. And he's like, yeah, I got it in the Alolan region version of Diglett Tunnel. And that's how he was able to beat Lieutenant Surge and take over as the Vermilion City gym leader. And, you know, he'll give you access to some kind of steel type move. Maybe, I don't know, Magnet Bomb? I kind of like that because it ties into the Electric and the steel type. Okay, and next we've got the fairy type gym, obviously. Where am I gonna put a fairy type gym? It's gym for fairy Pokemon. I don't know what I'm pointing at right now. Just insert image of fairy gym here. Okay, so it's Saffron City. You've heard rumors that Sabrina has been acting really, really strangely. You go through all the warp panels and go through her gym and you're thinking, what's different? She's always weird. She can see into the future and she's got psychic powers and she says very prophetic things. She starts off the battle, sending out Mr. Mime, psychic, psychic fairy. Then a Galarian Rapidash, again, psychic fairy. So you're like, oh, she's just a psychic gym leader with new psychic Pokemon. But then after beating those two Pokemon, she stops and Sabrina reveals that she is not Sabrina, but actually the copycat girl who grew up in this very town. And she's battling you with her fairy type Pokemon. Prepare to go. And here she comes with Galarian Weezing, Wigglytuff, and then finally Clefable, because in Generation 2 she lost her Clefairy doll. Well, now she's got Clefable, she's a fairy gym leader of Saffron City. It's a nice, like, switch out, and I would love it if Pokemon did something like that. And of course, at the end of it all, you get your TM for Dazzling Gleam. And then my favorite gym, we're gonna do the Dark-type gym in Kanto, because 
there are no dark type Kanto Pokemon, are there? Well, we can take regional variants. That's what I've had to do for these three types, given that they, these types didn't naturally occur in the Kanto region. And I kind of like the idea that Team Rocket is back. They're setting up a dark type gym just the other side of Mount Moon. No, not Pewter City, but the little Pokemon Center. Well, there's a little town outside that Pokemon Center now, and uh, there, there's kind of a little community, and it sounds like Team Rocket is making a comeback. The gym trainers all herald the gym leader. He must be absolutely awesome. He gave them all of them their Pokemon. And now they're starting up. Neo Team Rocket. They're gonna come back. They've all got Pokemon like Alolan Rattata, Alolan Grimer, Alolan Merc, Alolan Meowth, and Persian. All Team Rocket Pokemon, but all from Alola so that they've got that dark typing. And it is only when you get to the gym leader you realize who it is. This guy says that he used to sell Pokemon on the black market, and that allowed him to establish dominance over this little town, and soon he'll bring back Team Rocket. He starts off by sending out a Magikarp, and then a Gyarados, which becomes a Mega Gyarados, which is the only Kanto native Pokemon that is part dark type. And of course, this guy is the guy who in that Pokemon Center used to sell Magikarps for 500 Poké Dollars. You get your TM for a dark move like Payback, and there you go. That's how you do a Steel, Dark, and Fairy Gym in the Kanto region. First of all, that Magikarp salesman is by far one of the most evil characters in all of Kanto, so that is a dead-on pick there. But I really like your thoughts on those, especially that great choice for Fairy Gym. Crowdsourcing for the win. Getting creative with Pokemon is always fun, and if you want to get really creative, have you ever thought about whether there could be four starters? We'll be discussing that over on my channel. I personally love doing this challenge. It really forces me to be creative, only using access really to the roster of Kanto Pokemon or their regional variants. I have to use the Pokemon from within that region, and it, it kind of feels similar to my My Pokemon Gym series, which I'm hoping that once the next generation of Pokemon is out, I may end up revisiting. Until then, this is just a really good way to keep those kind of creative juices going, and I hope that you like it. And I want to hear what you would do for the flying normal bug uh, Dark Fairy and Steel Gyms in the comments down below. Also, if you can't wait to see what I do for every other Pokemon region, why not check out the playlist over on Emperor Cubone's channel. We've also got a video that we've done over there, so hit that link at the top of the description to head on over um, and yeah, see what he does and then we'll work out what I'm gonna do kind of in response to make sure I'm having very different gyms. I'm glad that we could come to an agreement, Toby. I can't wait to see how creative you get in the comments. Thank you all for watching and with that being said, so high, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. A huge thank you to anyone who has been supporting the channel this year, whether that's on Twitch, YouTube, or Patreon. And a massive thank you to the biggest Patreon of this month, JD Gottlich. Thank you and happy holidays, everyone.